This is a coding tutorial where I'm going to show you convert any LLM into a DeepSeq R1 style reasoner. We are going to use the GRPO, which is the group relative policy optimization that was used with DeepSeq R1. This is not my original code. Uh, I've like got code from the internet and I've tried to give credit as much as possible. And this may not work 100% time. So consider this to be an experimental effort. So at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you how I did this and what are the learnings that I got from that. And it was not successful when I did it. First of all, I would like to show you what is the code. Let's go through the code and then try to understand one by one. So this is a Google Collab notebook that's called like Quen.5. I've created a different version of it with all the credits that I can give. So if you go see here, so I've given like where the original script started, then where the the other collab came in, the other collab came in. And finally, this collab particularly that we are using, where did it come from? So I've given like all the credits as much as possible. So thankful to all of those. Now, in terms of output, how does it look? So if you see before training this model, so the output would look like something like this. You have a, a very simple um, output here. So where uh, you can see this is the training part. And it just like you have a question and then it gives an answer. So we're trying to create a mathematic uh, ML uh, reasoner. So just to solve math problem. So you can see before the training of the model, it doesn't do anything like deep seek R1. Just as a question, it gives you an answer back. But after the training, once the training is successful, which uh, I contacted the person and then he said like probably took two hours for him on A100, like high RAM, not on the free Google collab. So the code that I'm going to give you will work on free collab, not this one. So here, if you can see here after the training, the model started doing the internal reasoning. So you have got the reasoning part, then you have got the answer part. You have got the reasoning part and then you have got the answer part for every question. It does the reasoning part and then it gives you the answer part. So this is the original work. Now, what I'm going to show you is slightly modified version that actually works on Google Collab free notebook, which is the T4 machine. So on this machine also it does. On this machine, I tried to uh, train the same thing, but it was taking a lot of time. So I moved to a bigger machine, A100, for which like I'll show you the training details later on. But for now, if you were to try to understand the code, the code is pretty simple. So if you have a good machine, then I would strongly encourage you to use it with VLLM. But if you do not have good machine, then you can skip that. BLLM thing you don't we are not going to use BLLM. So the main thing here is that we are going to use the GRPO configuration from TRL, which is from hugging face. So they've tried to replicate the GRPO policy used as part of the reinforcement learning algorithm used in deep seek R1 training as much as possible. So we have got the system prompt. Uh, first, we have to prepare the system prepare the data set, the training data set. So we are going to take one large language model. So if we were to quickly show you what we are going to do, we are going to take one LLM. Okay, so there is going to be a simple LLM. In this case, what I have done is I have taken uh, an LLM called small LM. So this is I've taken I think 135 MB if I am correct. So I've taken a small LM. After we have a large language model, then we need one data set. So we need a training data set. In this case, we are going to use GSM 8K, which is a math data set, but we are going to convert GSM 8K in such a way that this is like a reasoning data set. So we're going to make it like a reasoning data set and use that to train this here using GRPO. So we are not doing like supervised fine tuning or anything. We're doing GRPO, but using a differently formatted data set from GSM 8K. So this is like basically what we are trying to do here. So if you go see the code, so for that we need the system prompt first of all. The system prompt is basically like this, respond in the following format, the reasoning and um, open tag and reasoning close tag. You have got three dots here, the ellipses, then answer three dots and close tag. So this is the system prompt. And then the XML COT format. So you can see that there is a reasoning tag open, reasoning tag closed, then reasoning inside, and then re answer, um, answer inside, answer closed. So this is like the basic fundamental, whatever data set that you pick up, you can go ahead with this. Now, the next part is how do you take the existing data set and then reformat it in such a way that it is understood for this particular training process. So we're going to try to fit it in the conversational format. So we have a certain helper functions or utility functions that you can call. It's going to take the data set, existing data set. So this is the place we are loading the data set. This is loaded from GSM 8K and we're going to use the system prompt and the question 
that is part of the data set if you have never seen gsm 8k this is like a quick look into gsm 8k gsm 8k is a very popular math data set on gsm 8k if you see uh, you have got um, you've got like the math question and uh, you have got the answer so the question and the answer no explanation nothing just simply question and answer but what we are going to do is we are trying to take it into convert into the format that we want so the question goes here the answer goes here and all those things after we do this this is the most important part for any reinforcement learning algorithm i mean to be honest like one of the most important part so reinforcement learning algorithm is basically trying to make the training process in such a way that the model maximizes the reward like the policy maximizes the reward so we are going to define what we call as reward functions in this particular case we have got five reward functions one two three four five six actually six reward functions in simple language if i were to explain what are the reward functions here the most important reward function of all is what we call as the correctness reward function for a given question we want the right answer so this basically compares whatever the model creates and then compares it with the correct answer and then if the answer is right it gives two if the answer is not right it gives zero so this is basically the most important reward function then we have got other reward functions to basically like steer the training process one is called int underscore reward function so this basically uh, checks whether the extracted response is a digit just to make sure that you know when the model gives you the output whether it has got a digit in it then there is a strict format reward function then there is a soft format reward function which kind of loosely looks for uh, whether the response contains three dots and whether you know this is like the xml format is there the count xml just tries to understand whether the xml tags exist in this particular case and then the xml count reward function basically again looks at um, the count xml for each response and then tries to count so these are like different kind of reward functions you can look into the code to understand what kind of things we are doing so for example if you look at count xml we are looking for this tag we are looking for this tag if this is present then we are giving the score um if uh, if this like this score if not we just leave it so these are the reward functions the reward functions play a very important role if you were to turn this instead of a math reasoning model if you were to turn this into a different one then you need to design your reward functions accordingly but i think this reward function is like good enough for you to start with once you have these reward functions next thing that we are going to do is we are going to define what model we want to use and we are going to define um what is like where to store the model and some training parameters what i have taken is i have taken the hugging faces small lm 135 million parameter model the original author which i just showed you used a quen 0.5 billion parameter model so now the base model that you take the quality of the base model also plays a huge role maybe i did not get a good convergence which means it did not generate properly because my base model is a very small model like 135 billion parameter model and then i was like trying to accelerate the training process i've been like doing this for the last three to four hours but if you were to if you have a long time if you were if you have longer compute then i would say you should try with a model like quen 2.5 0.5 billion parameter model which we can very visibly see for this particular author it turned into a reasoning model that is honestly why i decided to make the video even though my attempt failed and but hopefully i'll make a different one where my atom succeeded so we're going to define the model the model link comes from hugging face you can go pick any model so go just here like for example quen uh, 2.2.5 and uh, just pick one of the model not the visual language model one of the text generation model and then use the model uh, here in this particular location is where you have to define the model name the organization name and the model name next it's a very simple one um, just define where the output directory where you want to store the final model files and then what is the run name so if you are going to do this multiple times you need to have some run number like the name with which you can do versioning so for example here in this case it is simply like in a the run number here you can use it in weights and biases which is a model monitoring tool so that if you go you have like understanding of what are the different runs that i've done so you can see all these things ideally i'm supposed to give different names but i just went ahead with the same name here so that is the run name and then most importantly your training arguments so this basically tells how do you want to define um what kind of training that you wanted to do and one of the changes that the person who fit this in google collab did is he introduced an optimizer that 
kind of manages a lot of things. The learning rate is something that you want to play with based on, you know, how much out of memory error that you are hitting. These are like some standard um, numbers, like you can keep it as it is. Another important thing is uh, Google Colab doesn't support B float 16. So it is going ahead with FP 16. But if you are on a GPU, it supports B float 16. I would say you should change this into BF 16. The same thing um, goes here as well. Like if you see here, you can change it to BF uh, 16. And then the very important thing that you were to change for uh, the speed or uh, out of memory error, like you might hit could out of memory error, which means like GPU memory is full. Then this is the part. So right now it says the per device train batch size is one and then the gradient accumulation step is two. This is probably the least you can go with. Um, that also means that it will take a long time, like one and a half hours to two hours for it to train. So you can increase the batch size in the order of, let's say two ish, the base two. So one, two, four, um, eight, 16, 32, 64. During my experiment, even on an 80 GB VRAM machine, I could not go beyond 32. So the maximum I could hit the batch size was 32. I was also slightly doubtful, like speculating that maybe because my batch size was huge, I did not play with the learning rate a lot. The model did not converge. So that could be also a reason. So I would strongly encourage you to play with it after a few turns. So after this, um, everything else is straightforward. So the number of generation is basically for the reward function, like how much generation you want to happen. If you think the convergence is not happening, that means the model is not doing good, then I would say increase the number of generation. If you, if it is taking a lot of time, then I would say reduce the number of generation and go ahead with that. Rest, you can keep it as it is. I've uh, said use VLLM is false because it doesn't work well on Google Colab. It requires more memory. And then finally, I have the, the main Colab notebook says report to none. But ideally, if you want this to go to weights and biases for which you have to create a separate account on weights and biases, something like this, then you have to give weights and biases want B uh, to enable it. Then you have to copy the token from there and then put it here, which is quite a straightforward process. Then you are loading the model and then moving the model to CUDA, which is uh, the GPU. And again, if you have B float 16 here, make sure you're using B float 16. So keep the same data type everywhere that you have got Then load the tokenizer and everything. Now at this point, you're starting the GPO trainer and inside GPO trainer, you've got the model, you've got the tokenizer, then you've got the reward functions inside this reward function is where you're going to either remove some reward functions that you do not want or add new reward functions that you want. So once you have all these things, start the trainer and you're going to see this coming again and again, it takes a question from uh, GSM 8K. It extracts the response. These are the extracted response and then it trains the model. It just goes on and on and on until like, for example, in this case, like once the author completely finished, you would see something like the, the loss training loss um, fluctuating kind of changing here. And then finally it will have something like take the question, give the response and then reasoning, do everything well. And then finally give the answer back. Now coming into my experiment, I did it on a 100, which is like an expensive mission. I, I spent like four to five dollars for one hour, I think. So if you uh, or three, three ish dollars on run pod, I did or, um, for one hour. So what I did is you can see at some point, uh, very briefly, you could see like my training XML reward count going up like more than uh, zero. You can see it went up. And also, if you see the other important metric, the train reward, it went up at some point the training loss started kind of like coming down. I did it should come down. And then the KL divergence, it just says like how much different your training distribution is from the model exploring distribution, the new policy distribution. So it should not go too off, but the fact that it is going different means the code is actually working, whatever you're trying to do. Overall for me in my case, the model never showed the reasoning capability, but also like I said, like it could be attributed to a lot of weird stuff stupid shenanigans I was doing one or like my batch size was huge. I did not optimize the learning rate. I wanted to like fit it as fast as possible. I was playing with like different data types and also primarily the bigger issue could be my, uh, the large language model that I selected was 135 billion million parameter model, not a huge model. I wanted to try with a smaller model just to see how well it works. But again, I will continue my experimentation. I will share this Google collab notebook in the YouTube description and also my weights and biases, um, the dashboard in the YouTube description and also the original notebook in the YouTube description. 
but overall i think it's a fascinating piece of technology if you are somebody who is a fan of fine tuning and you want to like get into the 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 thing that everybody is talking about like training a model or turning any llm into a reasoning llm in the deep seek deep seek r1 style i would say just spend like five dollars ten dollars and then see how you can uh, how you can see what kind of results that you are doing again this is not a production ready solution this is not uh, for somebody who just wants to have a fine tuned model this is a very hackerish approach It's pure experimentation i'm just sharing it what i experimented so just try it out your own disk i hope this was helpful to you I, like um, i i this is like 3 am for me but i'm still like quite fascinated after spending a lot of hours i might hit the bed immediately after this but um, let me know what you feel about this like the kind of innovation that we have got and grpo see you in another video happy prompting